What's going on everyone? My name is Talmadge and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going over my comprehensive budget spreadsheet. Now, the reason I chose a spreadsheet over an app is because none of the apps quite fit my need like I wanted to. And so I decided to go the spreadsheet route. I put in everything manually. It ensures that I always have in the back of my mind where we're at in our budget every month. This sheet is fairly comprehensive. It covers a whole year and has sections for every single month. It's built using Apple numbers, so it can integrate with your iPhone with Apple shortcuts so that you can input expenses on the fly, which I'll show you how to do later. The link below to purchase this takes you to my website where you'll be able to buy the spreadsheet for $5 and hopefully it will end up saving you a lot of money in the long run when it helps you budget better. So opening up the spreadsheet, this is what you're gonna see. I filled it with some sample data. Over here we have the accounts database basically. So in here, you're gonna put all your checking accounts. What you're gonna to need to do here is obviously change these names to reflect the names of your accounts. Now they don't have to match exactly what they are in your bank. So like you could just name it checking for your main primary checking account. You know, for your Roth IRA, you could just leave it named Roth IRA and for your credit card, whatever that might be, you know, you can name that. I am not like Dave Ramsey. I actually like credit cards a lot as long as you pay them off every single month. I have a ton of them. Quick recommendation, there'll be an affiliate link down below for the Robinhood gold card. If 10 of you guys sign up using my link, then I'll be able to get a solid gold card. Um, but anyways, I really think the Robinhood gold card is going to be one of the next big everyday purchase cards because it's 3% on everything. And the monthly fee of $5 for Robinhood's gold platform, which also gives you 5.1% interest on uninvested cash. Okay. You could use that as a savings account as well, up to 2.5, 2.25 million FDIC insured. I think that's a really great deal. And the cashback, the fact that it's a visa, it works at Costco. If you don't have a Costco credit card and it actually gets better rates than the Costco credit card at Costco because of that, it's coming out pretty soon. So check that out if you want a good credit card. Um, that's my quick plug. That's the one I'm moving to as soon as the wait list goes off for most of my purchases. Anyways, here we have the accounts. I have one savings account for my short term savings for like specific goals and sort of things that aren't like, I just want to save for a house type thing. And what I decided to do was do the account name dot three letters, which indicate the purpose of the account. So TRV would be travel. INS is insurance because I pay my insurance every six months. So this is not my actual budget, but if it was, that's what I'm calling these. And as you can see, you can just split this out in here, even though in your bank, it's actually not split. That just makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to organize your money and know exactly where your money's allocated. So anyways, accounts, this, all you're going to have to do is basically just go in here, put in your account names and then put in your starting balance for whenever you're starting this budget. Ideally, you'd be starting this on January 1st, but if you're starting it in April, that's okay. Just note on this graph, you know, the first three months, you're going to have nothing put in your starting balances. Ideally, you should zero out your credit card. So have your credit card at $0. Everything else can be at whatever the balance is. Um, but I did try to start my year out with all my credit cards zeroed off. So it just made things really simple over here. This is your balance by month. This is basically a statistics spreadsheet. So that way you can get a quick idea of how you're doing like month over month throughout the year. You can see here, I have a category for the amount of income I made that month, the amount of savings. So the amount of money I've saved, the amount I've invested and the expenses. Unallocated funds means basically what funds are left in your income that haven't been used yet. So that formula is basically income minus savings minus investments minus expenses. That's why this is negative 13 because in this month, my total expenditure was $3,013, not 3000, which was my income. So therefore I'm sort of in the negative and I should pull from savings balance is my column that I have for income versus expenses, like, you know, profit loss type thing. Like I have a big margin of, I guess, profit from my income, basically income minus expenses. You're still technically in the green $607 because that doesn't take into account how much you've saved and invested. Whereas the unallocated funds is, has all your money been allocated or are you over allocating your money for things in the balance column is do I have money left for my income or am I actually operating in the red? And so if that column is red month over month, you have a really big problem. If it's just the unallocated funds, you may be fine, but you are technically still then pulling either from savings or investments. And then here we have the year budget. So basically this just pulls um, from all of the 
categories that are in the months and aggregates this here so that you can see total how much money in a year you're spending say on rent on power on water etc this i pretty much stuck to the budget for the first month with going a little bit over in a few categories this chart up here on the top right is again the amount of either income expense investments etc that you're having uh and savings that you're having every month so this once I, you fill it up, you'll have a nice little bar graph showing like, oh, this month I made a bunch and I saved a bunch or I didn't save very much, but I made a bunch and I spent a bunch this month. So it'll be kind of cool. Just a fun little chart to see. And then down here on the bottom right is our final chart for the annual overview. And this basically says, here's a nice little pie chart of percentages. How much did you spend and what did you spend the most on? As you can see, rent's the biggest, but after that you do have like emergency fund, car insurance, investments those are savings so those are factored in here you could edit the formula to take those rows out because it's building it off of this spreadsheet right here and then the last little thing over here we have total percent and it shows the percent of, so obviously incomes the most but then are you what's your saving percentage over the year what's your investments what's your expense percentage so obviously here we're a little bit under our ideal savings percentage ideal is 20 or above but you know times are hard so Life is expensive. It is what it is. Now here in January, this is where you're going to have to make the most changes to make this spreadsheet work for you. But I've made it pretty simple. I'll go over all of the changes that you should need to make. Hopefully I don't leave anything out. Let's get into it. So obviously here we have the date and you have the account. We'll go over here for this accounts. You're going to want to obviously change this to match these. And if you change these values in here, just make new rows. In this one then it'll show up for example if this is not the same cd nothing shows up but as long as i go back here and i name it cd the value shows up this is just a replica of this overview but in every month just so you can easily see it in one little dashboard you can basically just take the list of accounts and just copy paste that into every single month and that'll let you quickly replicate it so you don't have to worry about it same thing over here with the budget. If you want you to find your columns, if you just take these two left hand most columns and just copy paste those down all the other spreadsheets. Once you've defined your budget, that'll be good. This also lets you change your budget every month. So say for example, I'm like, oh, well, I'm spending way more on food, like consistently three months in a row. I need to alter my budget and maybe, you know, spend a little less on discretionary and spend more on food. Then, you know, come April, I can change that and say, you know what, my food budget needs to go up. So that's why I have the budget individualized every single month. Over here in expenses, income, and transfers, you have these little drop down menus that mirror your accounts list. So once you get your accounts list done, you wanna come over here to say this income field. Obviously you wanna delete all these, ex except for the first row. So that way you still have a row with like the preset stuff in it. Delete all of them except the first row, but then come over here to this first row of income and what you're going to want to do is go to sell, see it's a pop-up menu, and then just come in here and put in all your accounts. And from there, you can just copy and paste this into the accounts column for all of your income spreadsheets for the whole year. And then the source and the destination and then for the transfers and the account for expenses. The way I use this, if I have money coming in, that's from an external source, that's income. That goes in the income spreadsheet. If I'm transferring money between accounts, whether it's for credit card payments or for savings, etc that goes in here the category field is if i have special income that applies to a specific category maybe i sold a camera and i'm buying a new camera and i'm filing the new camera purchase under miscellaneous but i want to use the old camera money but not have it like screw my whole budget up what i'll do is i'll categorize that as miscellaneous and then as you can see here we have a surplus in miscellaneous because i did that now obviously i'm going to take this out but that's just to allow you to categorize it and make at least in your month budget view make it in the positive positive. and then for the transfers category this just allows you to have categories in your budget for allocated savings every month and then for you to fulfill that using your transfer say emergency fund car insurance investments etc down here in expenses everything should be categorized of course i have just a few little categories to like kind of fill up the budget interest payments at the end of the month usually come in for savings accounts you're going to want to put those in the income as well i don't have that here in the template monthly stats is pretty much the final thing you're going to want to edit so then the other thing you're going to want to do is come in here and edit these formulas and basically this one is any account that i know is a savings account i'm going to put its name in here so that it calculates out of the transfers in my transferring money into a savings account the same thing with investments 
you're going to want to name put your account names in here just same format as the savings the expenses and income you're not going to have to edit yeah and then from there you're probably going to have to go in and put that in for every single monthly stats just as you have as you get into a new month just go paste those account values in to the new month and you should be good to go okay and the final quick thing we're going to look at is shortcuts so in ios you have shortcuts and basically what we can do here is go to add expense this shortcut that i'm also going to share with you uh, in the description and basically this is how you want to architect the shortcut so you would put in all your okay so you put in all of your different accounts which i'm have here and then all of your categories and basically you have a list choose from list list choose from list ask for text where from ask for number how much current date and format of the date and then you want your numbers query to say add formatted date so the date of today chosen item provided input provided input which is where from how much to the bottom of expenses in your month name so if it's april then you would name it april if it's not then you would have and then in your spreadsheet name and so if it's april you'd be april then you have to change this every month but basically then it allows you a nice little pop-up where you can just run it like this and it works on your iphone really well you can say hey i want my checking i want to do giving i want to do church and then 500 dollars, and then it would add it into your budget which i'm not going to show you my budget but that's basically what it does so anyways if you guys found this helpful please feel free to click the link down below and go check out my budget spreadsheet on my website as well as the shortcuts going to be included with that if you're looking for a great credit card with three percent cash back then the robin hood gold credit card looks really good so you can check that out at the link below as well feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content by me i'm going to come out with some more videos pretty soon hopefully anyways that's all for today if you like the video give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one